All right, students, um, we're going to be talking about the graphs for a bouncing ball. So we'll start with the VT graph as usual, my favorite graph out of the tree. So um, the ball is dropped from rest. Huh? So we are going to start with uh, velocity equals to zero at t equals to zero. So now the ball is dropping, it speeds up as it falls. So the graph is going to look like this. So why is it negative? Because uh, we have chosen upward to be positive. So the ball is dropping down huh? and it's speeding up as it falls. That's why it becomes more and more negative. Why is it a straight line graph? Because the acceleration is constant. It's downward 9.81 meter per second square. And now here we go, the bounce, bam, right? Suddenly there's a switch in direction as the ball switches from a downward velocity to an upward velocity. Because um, we are assuming an elastic collision, so no Ke is lost during the bounce. So we draw the speed to be the same before and after the bounce. So now the ball is rising, right? After the bounce, it's rising up. As it rises, it slows down. Now whether it's falling or whether it's rising, the acceleration is downward, 9.81 meter per second squared. That's why the blue line and the green line are parallel. They should have the same gradient. Remember, the gradient of the VT graph is the acceleration. All right, so now the ball has returned to velocity equals to zero. What does that mean? That means it's at a peak again. So it's like we're back to the point where we first dropped the ball. So everything just repeats again and again and again. All right, so we're done with the VT graph. Uh, let's move on to the AT graph. As long as the ball is in the air, as long as the ball is not in contact with the floor, it experiences only uh, gravitational pull. So A is always negative 9.81 meter per second squared. Why is it negative? Uh, yeah, we have chosen upward to be positive. Huh? All right, so acceleration is negative G, except uh, when the ball bounces. When the ball bounces, the surface exerts a very large upward uh, normal contact force. So it makes the net force upward, which makes the acceleration upward. So during the bounces, the acceleration is not even downward. It's not 9.81 meter per second squared downward. It's not even downward. It's a very uh, strong upward acceleration. So um, let's match the AT graph to the VT graph. So you look here. See how abruptly the velocity changes at a bounce. If you were to calculate the acceleration, it's going to be like V max minus negative V max divided by that duration of time. It's like zero, huh? We are, we are dividing by zero. So that's undefined. There's an infinitely large acceleration. That's why the acceleration graph looks like that. So let's go through it again. So it's falling, free falling at 9.81 meter per second square downward. Then BAM! That's the bounce, huh? So suddenly there's a very strong upward acceleration. And now the ball is free rising. Again, the acceleration is downward, 9.81 meter per second square. Now it's free falling again. And then BAM! And now it's the free rising part. I think you should have no problem with the ST graph. Uh, just for completeness sake, I'll show the ST graph here. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!